Plan B is not abortion. If you get nothing else out of this video, I want you to get that. But what is it? Let's find out. Why, hello there, friend. I'm Liz, a family nurse practitioner on a mission to make healthcare education and information more accessible through the power of YouTube and sarcasm. Why? Because our healthcare system is broken and we all deserve better. But to fix this problem, we must first understand it. So go grab your sassy feelings. I certainly will bring mine and let's learn together. Now, recently, the governor of Tennessee signed an amendment into the abortion laws in the state that's going to take place in 2023. And this states that abortion pills would no longer be available to purchase online. This caused a whole flurry of concern on my internet that plan B emergency contraception would no longer be available to order online as well. However, since plan B emergency contraception is not abortion medication, this doesn't appear to be the case. If there's even like a tiny, tiny little speck of hope around this entire situation, let it be that fact. But it does bring to light a really good teaching point on what exactly is plan B. And please, by all means, if I interpreted the amendment incorrectly, um, let me know. My Google law education is still very rusty, but I'm trying. So plan B is one type of emergency contraception. How many types of emergency contraception is there out there? Four types. There are two kinds of pills. We have plan B and Ella, and you can also take a combination of oral contraception pills under the guidance of a provider or a pharmacist, or you can have a copper IUD inserted as the fourth option. All of these emergency contraception methods are the most effective at preventing pregnancy. The closer they are taken or implemented to the day that you had unprotected sex. We will go into some details of what makes some methods more effective than others. However, I want to point out in the beginning that the primary objective of these emergency contraception methods is to prevent pregnancy. None of these methods have any effect if pregnancy has already implanted and started. So in order to explain how these medications work and how they definitely don't work, it's important to know how an individual actually becomes pregnant. So during a typical reproductive cycle, we have our reproductive system here. The uterus owner grows an egg in the ovary, which is then released through ovulation into the fallopian tubes. And it begins a journey where it eventually makes its way to the uterus. While on this journey, it may become fertilized by sperm. And if it does become fertilized, it can then attach attach itself or implant into the wall of the uterus, and then you can proceed with pregnancy. The primary goal of emergency contraception pills is to delay releasing an egg or delay ovulation, because if there's no egg, there's nothing to fertilize. And so there's nothing to become pregnant with. The copper IUD on the other hand, actually creates a super hostile environment for the sperm, attacking the little swimmers so they can't even fertilize the egg, very hardcore. I'm impressed by the IUD if you can't tell. So just to clarify the differences real quick, abortion ends a pregnancy and emergency contraception prevents a pregnancy, just like birth control. And plan B is a form of emergency contraception, but not all emergency contraception is plan B, since there are three other types, just to make that abundantly clear. I think it's very convoluted how we message everything like that around healthcare. So I'm trying, I'm trying to make it simpler. Now let's look into what each of these medicines actually do, starting with plan B. So plan B is the brand name for the emergency contraception with the active ingredient leven, levenor, levenogestrel. Levenogestrel is the progesterone ingredient in many combined oral contraception or birth control pills. Plan B is 88 to 95% effective when taken up to three days after unprotected sex. It should be available over the counter in any pharmacy with no age requirement or limit in order to purchase it, but it can be quite expensive, which makes it unattainable and not a great option for many. Something to know with plan B is if you weigh more than 155 pounds, plan B may not be as effective. However, if this is you and this is all you have access to, it's absolutely still worth it to take it because it provides more of a chance of avoiding pregnancy than doing absolutely nothing at all. Next on the list, we have Ella, a prescription only emergency contraception pill. The active ingredient is eulopristal acetate. And when taken within 72 to 120 hours or five days after unprotected sex, Ella is 85 to 98% effective. Again, with the most efficacy occurring closer to the date of unprotected sex. This medication is often cheaper if you have insurance than plan B is over the counter. 
and this medication may be less effective, something to note if you are over 195 pounds. One tip here with Ella is many insurance companies do cover this medication. So if you are an individual who is currently sexually active or is thinking of becoming sexually active and you have the potential in any way to become pregnant, I always recommend my patients fill one prescription of Ella just so they have it on hand if they ever need it. That way there's no anxiety about timing. They can take it as soon as possible for the highest efficacy. And there's no added stress of trying to get in contact with me in order to get the prescription for them when they need it because it's inevitably the weekend or a holiday, that's always when these things happen, right? So definitely something to consider asking your healthcare provider about if you are the owner of a uterus. Now, the third type of emergency contraception is taking several existing combined oral contraception pills. So if you're already on birth control, this you can hodgepodge a method together with this. This method requires some provider oversight because the number of pills and timing that you're going to take all at one time is going to vary based on the birth control you're taking. This is honestly not my personal favorite plan because it can cause quite a lot of nausea and vomiting and other side effects due to the fact that these pills have estrogen in them as well. However, it is 75% effective when all the pills are able to be taken. So if that's what you have and that's all we've got to work with, it's definitely worth having a conversation with your healthcare provider about if need be. And the last form of emergency contraception is the copper IUD, our hardcore friend from before. If inserted within five days of having unprotected sex, it is 99.5% effective, making it the most effective emergency contraception option. However, I should note that in reality, it is really difficult to get an appointment to get in and be seen and have a copper IUD inserted and place within five days. I don't know if I've ever seen it happen, but if you've succeeded with this method, please let us know below and any tips you have. But in the perfect world where you can have this option, it's really a great one because it not only acts as your plan B in this instance, but it also acts as your like plan A or your birth control going forward since it can stay in place and prevent pregnancy for 12 years. All right, so that's what plan B is. That's what all the other emergency contraception is. How then has all of this been confused with abortion? I think part of the problem is the general lack of reproductive health education that we have on what birth control is, how birth control works, how people get pregnant, how we avoid getting pregnant, how the mechanism of plan B works and how abortion actually works. Additionally, with medications like Ella, the name is very similar to abortion medication names. Remember the active ingredient in Ella is ulipristol acetate and the names of abortion pills are mifepristone and misopristol. So I can totally see where the confusion comes from. Now, having emergency contraception readily available and easy to access via pharmacies and then stores like Walmart, Rite Aid, Target, also via the internet is an incredibly important aspect of reproductive health care. I hope this gave you a little bit more information on the topic that's currently swirling around the news and maybe ease your stress a little bit because goodness knows we need a win in the reproductive health care space at the moment. Deep breaths, friends, deep breaths. If you have any other questions or current healthcare topics you'd like me to cover, feel free to email me here or send it to me and on Instagram or tag me on TikTok. And uh, of course we can't end this video without the world's biggest shout out to my channel members who offer continual support. Huge thank you to the newest members, Umalu to Brittany McDonald, Jeremy Castillo, Brenda Yarber, Andy and Karen Nicholas. P.S. If you are a member, make sure to check your feed for some recent and also future videos that I have, like I have thoughts episodes that are coming up. And if you're interested in becoming a channel member, the link is down below. Also, if you want a very free way of supporting the channel, you can just like, comment, share, subscribe. All of those things make the YouTube gods very happy which in turn makes me happy. I hope you have a fabulous rest of your day. Thank you for spending a few minutes of yours with me and I will see you next time there's some internet foolery around the medical topics. And remember, you are not alone, you are enough and you can do hard things. Later, my friends.